for Table 29, I'm sorry, but it raises, uh, re-raises the issue of writing out your questions, putting them in the question box on the table outside the door, or um, pigeonholing innocent people like Rick and John, thank you very much, both of you, by the way, um, during breaks, during the reception this evening, uh, I think most people are going to that, or any of the people you, you heard this morning, make their lives miserable. I mean, uh, ask them any questions that, uh, that you still have, and, um, and I know that they're, they're more than willing to, to entertain those questions. We're, we're going to be going to lunch shortly, but before we do, um, I want to acquaint you with some of the process, some of the procedure that's going to, going to go on this afternoon, because it's fundamentally important that we, we uh, are able to move smoothly from place to place. Um, first of all, at about 12.30, lunch will begin. It's going to be a buffet. It's served out in the area just opposite those doors. And we want you to avoid using the middle doorway because everything will fall apart if you do that. Use the doorway over there and the doorway over there to get to the buffet. If you go through the middle, you will enter perdition and it will be dreadful. Um, I've also been asked to remind you, uh, anybody who um, is receiving travel support and have not yet seen Denise Zinn, Z-I-N-N, you've got to see her today. And she is at the travel desk in the corridor, which I'm going to guess is the same desk that the parking was at? Nope. There's a travel desk in the corridor. Look for it and find Denise Zinn if you're receiving um, travel support. I think your travel support may depend upon seeing her, so make it your business to do that today. Um, what's going to happen at 1230 when we head out of here is um, we have about an hour and a half for the lunch period, but don't think that you get to eat that whole time because it, at one o'clock in here, we're going to hear from Elliot Norris and you'll want to be here for that. So what the um, organizing committee has carefully structured is a situation where you go through buffet lines and there's a number of them and you come back in here with your food and you've got to have accomplished that by one o'clock. So you've got a, a half an hour to get your food and get in here. Don't have to eat it by then, but just get in here with it. Because at one o'clock sharp, we're going to start with, um, with uh, Elliot Norse's um, session, which will be followed by some questions. Um, he's going to have about a half an hour. There'll be about 20 minutes of questions. And then, I don't want to confuse you, but we have to break 10 minutes before um, 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 12 or 30, 1 o'clock. 2 o'clock because we're going to put a wall down here and create two spaces in here for the breakout rooms. Um, so that will happen until about 10 minutes to 2. I think I've got my timing right. And there are a few things I want you to think about, if you'd be so kind, for the after lunch breakout session. First of all, it's going to be the first of our two breakout sessions. And remember, this is the one that deals with vision, your values, your interests, the things that you regard as fundamentally important. Uh, much of the stuff we've heard this morning can be, can be contributed to those discussions. If you haven't yet put anything on those sticky notes, please do. Any of the values, um, the interests that you think are fundamentally important should be down on those sticky notes over lunch. If they get some food on them, that's good too. Um, then what's going to happen after the lunch period is over is we'll have you go directly to your breakout rooms. Um, you've already been pre-selected to be in certain breakout rooms and the reason for that is the people organizing this um, looked over the descriptions of the organizations from which you come, the uh, uh, communities and so on that you've come from, and tried to get good diversity built into each one of the seven breakout groups. Um, and I th it looks like they've done a pretty good job of that. So for that reason, and because the rooms have certain holding capacity, we would like you to please respect the groups that you've been put in. Now, the way you find out what group you're in is you look on the back of your, um, your card and you will see a colored sticky thing. Uh, some of them are round, some of them are like stars. Um, and so for the first task is to look on the back of this and see what color or star you got, and then find the location on these screens that you see. So if you're a silver star, you're going to go to a place called Minoru D. Generally speaking, the Minoru rooms are these rooms, if I'm not mistaken. 
you'll have to look on the outside of the door to see which is which. Generally speaking, the Westminster rooms are the ones around the corner, like the room you registered in, and they go on from there. So get the right number of the room you're going to, write it down or commit it to memory, and Cedar Bridge is the very last room down that hall. So if you can just get that in, in your mind uh, before we leave here, so much the better. We're going to put these slides back up after you've heard from Elliot Norris just to remind you where to go. Um, and I think that's all you need to hear from me. So I would encourage you at this point to use the two outside doors. I hope the buffet is ready. I suspect it is. And try to be in here, please, by 1 o'clock so we can get underway. Thanks very much. Thanks for